Isla, the Y is silent. 270 vessels have come to grief in the waters around here, from ocean liners to submarines. Islander Gus Newman wants to show me the final resting place of a steamship known as a Clyde Puffer. Oh, yeah, 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 yes! Oh, God, there! Yeah. Happy with that? Yes, they're yeah, overjoyed. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, looking lovely and freezing. <laughs> Just my side of icy. <laughs> the plan is I take a closer look. That's where the cabin would be. I've never dived a wreck before. I've never been near. I've only dived in very warm water. I worry about um, snagging my gear on something and getting trapped down there, but there's um, safety measures in place, so that should be all right. These wrecks tell a story of the hazards of local life, as islander Bertie Brown knows all too well. When we sit there and look out in the sea, everyone just looks and says, there's rocks out there, but I know, well, there's that wreck there, and I know what it looks like, or there's that reef there, I know what it looks like. It's a great thing to, to know what it's like, and you go down and you, you kind of look at the wrecks and you think of the past and what happened in these wrecks, and why they went down, and read a bit yeah, of history about yeah. them, and it's, it's good and, to know. And the, yeah. All the history of the island really in them. Right. OK. One, two, three, on you go. In 1917, a Clyde puffer called the John Strachan was bringing cargo to the Inner Hebrides when it hit a rock. It sank here, yet another casualty in the struggle to keep these islands alive. Puffers were specifically designed to work these waters. This one was 80 feet long and had a flat hull allowing it to run aground on the remote beaches and unload its cargo. These cabins also housed a crew of four puffermen. Thankfully, all the crew on this ship were saved. And now it's me who needs help. I'm having trouble with my mask, and it's making me panic. I was trying not to panic and breathe, you know. But then I saw, ah, there's a big ship down here. It's all covered in kelp. It does look very ghostly. Ah, uh, yeah, it does ghostly, eh? And, um, you can see right under the hull. Yeah, but then I just couldn't um, stop my breathing from, from panicking. Yeah. They were the worst moments of my life. <laughs> so coming up, knowing that I had to breathe sensibly. Yes. On the way up, when all I wanted to do was um, cry. But Being isolated by treacherous seas is a fact of life for Isla's 3,000 inhabitants. They've come to rely on this beautiful island's natural resources. It's a fertile place where farming has thrived, earning the island the title the Queen of the Hebrides. <laughs> 